Hello everyone, in the previous video, we just created this 889s52.h header file and we are just going to use this header file from now on till the end of this course. And in this previous video, we just defined the addresses of all the four ports, port 0, port 1, port 2 and port 3. And also in addition to that, we also defined the addresses of all the individual port pins available in this microcontroller so that we can access all the individual pins separately. And in this video, we are just going to write a program for blinking the onboard LED that is available in my development board in this format. Let's get started. Now coming to our program, so these data buffers that is port 0, port 1, port 2 and port 3 are bidirectional pins. So you can either write 1 or 0 to it or you can directly read the data that is available in the particular pin. So you need not configure it as input or output that is not necessary. So initially I am just going to create a delay function over here in the top of the main function void delay. And I am declaring a variable d and inside again I am declaring another variable unsigned end of i and here I am just going to use only one for loop d i plus plus and I am terminating this for loop. So this is just a loop delay, this is not an accurate delay, this is just an approximate delay. So we will see about the process of generating accurate delay using timer of this microcontroller in the future lectures. But for now in our program for generating approximate rough delays we will be using this delay function. We will be using this delay function. Now coming to our int main I am not going to write any initialization function calls. I am directly coming inside the infinite loop. So now as I said our process is simple I just want to turn on this P1.0 and I want to wait for a particular period of time. After the time I just want to turn off this bit and again I want to wait for the same period of time for blinking this LED. So this is the process right. So what I am going to do is I am just going to write the yes bit name port port 1 P0 equal to 1. So we have declared this as S bit right. So this is the S bit to which the LED is connected. So I am just making that bit as high and I am going to use the delay. So roughly I am giving around 30,000 and after the delay I am just going to turn off the same bit port 1 P0 equal to 0 and again I am just calling the same function called delay with 30,000. So since these four lines are available inside the infinite loop after the execution of this delay again this line will be executed and the process will be carried out until the microcontroller is stopped. So now I am building this code using the button over here. You can see it is compiling with zero errors and zero warnings and for creating the hex file click on this options for target and here click on this output and check this create hex file checkbox and then click on ok. Now again compile this code for creating hex file and that's it. Now come to our Proteus simulation, double click, double click on this IC and click on this program file icon over here to load the program. Now go to the respective folder where the program files has been stored. Now inside the program files folder go to the objects folder. Here you can find the hex file. Click on this and click on open to load the program. Now click on ok. Now the program has been successfully loaded. Now play the simulation using the play button in the top left corner of the window. Now you can see the LED connected to P1.0 is blinking.
you can see this is the development board that I'm going to use for demonstrating all the outputs that I get in my hardware. And here in my development board, you can see the ISP pinouts where you can connect the USB ASP programmer pinouts directly to this connector for programming this microcontroller or for uploading the hex file directly to this microcontroller. So the programmer that I am going to use is USB ASP programmer and I am going to connect the pinouts of this programmer to my ISP programming lines available in my development board like this. And I am going to connect this USB ASP programmer to my PC through USB cable like this. And the other end of my USB ASP programmer I am just going to connect that to the PC through USB cable. You can see the terminal connections of ISP programmer is this one. Reset is connected to reset pin of the ISP programmer and the clock is connected to clock, MISO to MISO, MOSI to MOSI and VCC ground to the respective pins. So you can see all the pins are directly provided in my development board or if you are not having a development board you can also build the circuit in a breadboard for uploading the hex to your microcontroller like this. So this is the pin out of this USB ASP programmer. I just want to connect the MOSI to the pin 6 and MISO to pin 7 and clock to pin 8 as well as the reset pin must be also connected to the pin 9 then the VCC must be connected to the pin 40 and ground must be connected to pin 20. In addition to this you just want to provide a 11.0592 MHz crystal to this 18th and 19th pin of the microcontroller and then you just want to pull this EA pin high so that you are indicating to the microcontroller that you are just going to use the internal ROM of the microcontroller. So using this circuit you can also upload the hex file to this microcontroller even in breadboard. After the connection is done open the program ISP software. The link for the software is provided in the description of this video you can directly download it from there. Now you can see in this software this program ISP icon is not highlighted that means the programmer is not yet connected before that you just want to choose the microcontroller that you are working on so our microcontroller is 8089s52 that is being selected but regardless of all the microcontrollers available you just want to select the microcontroller that you are working on so i am choosing 8089s52 and then now when i connect by usb asp programmer usb cable to my pc you can see this icon is highlighted which means that the programmer is connected to the PC USB port. Now for uploading the flash or the hex file to this software you just want to click on this file tab and click on load flash and go to the respective project folder where you have stored the project files and there you can find the hex file inside this objects folder and click on this hex file and click on open. Now you just want to check the required operations that needs to be done when you click on this auto button. So I need the microcontroller to be erased as well as program the flash to the microcontroller and then after programming I want the flash to be verified. So these three are the operations that I need. So I am just leaving these three checked. Other than that I am not checking any other checkbox. And remember one thing that while programming the power from the USB ASB programmer is sufficient for the microcontroller. So you need not connect any external 5 volt signal to the microcontroller for powering up. Now for uploading the hex file just click on this auto button. Now you can see the hex file is being downloaded to your microcontroller 8089S52. And the programming has been done. Now build the circuit to see the output in the hardware. You can see this is the development board that I am using. And this one is the port 1. You can see these 8 pins belong to port 1. This is 1.0 and this one is 1.7. So we have connected the anode of the LED to 1.0. So I am just going to connect this pin P1.0 
to one of the anodes of any one of these LEDs. So I'm just going to use this jumper cable for connecting this. Let's see, I'm just connecting this P1.0 with the first LED that is this LED. So I'm just going to use this LED and the cathode of this LED will be internally connected to the ground of this board. So you need not worry about that. That's all about the connections. Now that the circuit connections is over, we have connected one of the LEDs anode, one of the eight LEDs anode to the P1.0 pin and cathode of the LED is connected to ground by default in this development board. And for powering up this development board, I'm just going to use the 12 volt 1 amps adapter. That is this one. So I'm just going to connect this adapter to the power socket available over here. And when I turn on the power supply, you can see the onboard LED which is connected to P1.0 is blinking. So this is the output that I got in my hardware. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching.